Welcome to this episode of Grassroots Advocacy. If you haven't had the opportunity, I would encourage you to go back and look at the previous episodes. If you like what you see in this episode or the previous episodes, I would encourage you to like, share, and comment in the space provided below so that you share the good information that you're receiving. I am really pleased and honored to be joined by a really remarkable certified nursing assistant and a leader in long-term care. Mr. Wendell Anderson has been a part of the NACA organization for more than 10 years. He currently serves as the chairman of the National Board of Directors, a governing body of and for certified nursing assistants. Wendell, thank you so much for being thank with you us for today. Having me, Jeff. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. Um, I know most people probably don't know me, but um, as Jeff said, I'm Wendell Anderson. Um, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Lee CNA at my facility now for 15 years. When you very first started the association and you got involved, um, you weren't the kind of st stick your toe in the water kind of guy. <laughs> you were the kind of guy who dived right, dove right in. And what was really cool about that was that first opportunity that you had to go to the hill, to mm -hmm. the hill, mm -hmm. and how well you spoke with those elected leaders. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about what that experience was like? Oh, Jeff. Oh, that that felt good. That felt really good. Um, I recall we went to to um, uh, speak to Senator McCain. Uh, I remember as we walked in, everyone was saying, hey, we never get a chance to speak with him. We never get a chance to speak with him. I told them, I said, we're going to speak to him today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. I told them, we're going to speak to him today. And sure enough, his uh, assistant came out and said, Senator McCain, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys in the back office here. So when I went back there, the first thing that I admired about him was his respect for the health care. Uh, but sitting down there talking with him, I believe it was me and Tammy Late, I believe it was, mm -hmm. uh, the other CNA, sitting there speaking with him and seeing that he's really listening to our concerns about our residents and what's going on with the residents, you know, was, was so shocking to me. I, I guess that's the right word because, I mean, I just felt so good that I didn't waste my time. I didn't waste the association time. Being there, this guy, this Senator McCain actually listened to us. So after I left there and the story got around that I actually uh, spoke with uh, Senator McCain, uh, I, I received that nickname, <laughs> <laughs> Senator <laughs> Anderson. So to this day, it's still great. I tell this story as often as I can. And uh, I truly enjoy being called Senator Anderson. <laughs> 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 you know, um, Wendell, you're also uniquely positioned to talk about advocacy from the perspective that you represent a unique segment of the certified nursing assistant profession. You represent mm -hmm. male nursing assistants. Yes, yes. Um, when I very first started with NACA, uh, we did a study and what we found was that about six and a half percent of the overall nursing assistant population were male. Mm -hmm. And today what we've discovered in recent data is that males represent about 14 to 15% of the population, which that's a good news story mm -hmm. because the number of males entering the profession is increasing. It's true. When you think about your role as a male nursing assistant and serving as a voice for your residents or your neighbors, mm -hmm. Um, and speaking about your voice as a certified nursing assistant and then also long-term care, do you see that as a male nursing assistant you're listening to with more um, intensity? You know, I, I do, Jeff. Um, true enough, this is a female-dominant uh, profession. Um Probably what in each facility, you probably have what four males total, uh, especially when you're talking about long term care. Uh, but to go back to your question, um, yes, the males do. They tend to come to me for uh, different advice about about this or about that. How do uh, how do you handle a resident that may or may not want a male to fully take care of them? 
you know, of course, my answer is going to always be get your nice female to go in there with you. Mm -hmm. Explain mm -hmm. to let her explain to that resident what what you need done uh, and if it's OK for you to to help them. Um, and with that said, uh, one of the things that I try to do well, that I should say I've been doing for five years now. Also, Jeff, is uh, I present the male CNAs with what we call the uh, Wind Anderson Male CNA Award, which is two categories, which is male CNA of the year and as well as rookie of the year. And this is my way to show uh, all the male CNAs out there that, hey, you have someone that's advocating for you every day and once a year, I would like to recognize you for who you are and what you do in this dominant field of females. Awesome. You know, um, you, you stole my thunder just a Did teeny I? little bit, but I don't, I, I'm not mad at you. Okay. Because okay. <laughs> I was going to talk about the fact that you established in mm -hmm. your care setting uh, the male CNA of the year. And guys, if you, if you haven't seen this on Facebook, um, I would encourage you to go to Facebook because, um, what Wendell and his center started in the beautiful state of Arizona is spreading across the United States. Mm -hmm. Um, this year I noticed that five other states were also doing okay. some, some male CNA recognition. So I want to encourage you to check that yeah, out. Thank you a lot for that. Uh, you can also go on to um, the Let's Talk CNA mm -hmm. uh, page, which is also a, sh um, a show that I, I founded. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also go up there and you can go to that page and you can find my findings um, from 2014 that's, that's still relevant to, to today. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so, um, yeah, I think that, uh, guys, if you haven't had a chance to check out Let's Talk CNA, it is a a show that is produced um, with nursing assistants in mind. And what I find most uh, appealing about it is mm -hmm. that it's a, a show that keeps things real. Right. And keeps right. things in the moment and keeps things relevant. And what right. I mean by relevant is you're not talking about last weekend's football <laughs> game. You're talking about things that are happening right now that we need to understand. Like, for example, in a recent episode, y'all talked about hospital readmission, yes. which is one of the quality measures that um, the uh, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services is looking at. Um, and more importantly than that, we do know the data tells us that when an elder has to be readmitted to the hospital, it creates unnecessary and undesirable trauma. Mm -hmm. It does. So, Wendell, when I think about you, another way that I think about you is in terms of your leadership. Mm -hmm. As you reflect on your career as a nursing assistant, have you noticed a change? in how nursing assistants are listened to or how nursing assistants are expressing themselves when they serve as advocates? I have. Um, I think it's a, from my time of being with the association to now my time as, as being a CNA, which has been a little over 30 years, uh, I have seen where, where CNAs are more... Um, um, uh, desire to to express how they feel or uh, what what they feel a resident's needs are, mm -hmm. uh, and they're not afraid anymore to address these needs. Um, even for myself, I mean, when I see that a that one of my residents are uh, or is in need of anything or whether that be clothes or we have what we call snack time. Maybe they need their own or would like to have their personal snacks or, or whatever the case may be, the abuse, all the neglect, the abuse and neglect that's going on. However, you know, yes, I do see that there is a slight change in, in how uh, CNAs are addressing um, their neighbor's needs or their residents' needs. Awesome. That's really wonderful. I, uh, I, as I was listening to you, Wendell, something that occurred to me is that um, you've, over the course of your profession, 
you've gone from from working in an environment or serving in an environment mm -hmm. that's a pure medical model of care where as long as there wasn't any weight loss as long as there wasn't any to cubes as long as we were administering the medication on the right cycle mm -hmm. things were good back in the day <laughs> and now today right. we exist in a social model where it's not just the well, the physical well-being of the person we're caring for, but it's their emotional and their social well-being. And so I wonder if a part of that, um, that transformation that we're seeing in terms of being listened to isn't a function of we're going from one way of doing business to an entirely different way of doing business. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most important thing, though, the good news story here is people are listening. Um, I can tell you as I've traveled across the country visiting with our member centers, I've had a number of CNAs say, why say anything? They're not going to listen. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, um, there was a time in our career when that might have been true. I think more and more as we move to the future, intelligent people anyway are going to want to get the point of view from the person <laughs> closest to the resident or the patient or the neighbor that is true before they make decisions mm -hmm. so i definitely agree with you on that job yeah. i wonder from your perspective wendell um if there was one piece of advice that you could give our viewers um about how to serve as an advocate for your residents your profession and the post-acute and long-term care system, what would that piece of advice be? I hope this is answering your question, Jeff, but my, my advice would be put the resident needs first. If you put the resident needs first, all other will fall in place. That's from my perspective. You know, and uh, Wendell, that really, it fits perfectly with where we should be today. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the big things that we talk about is person-centered care. Correct. And you can only achieve person-centered care when you put that person at the center of the discussion. Mm -hmm. What are their needs? What are their wants? What are their desires? And what can we reasonably do to meet all of those, all of those needs? Correct. Wendell, I really appreciate that you shared your time with me today. Thank you um, for having me on the show. <laughs> you know, I want you guys um, to go check out uh, Let's Talk CNA. I also want you to go and look for Wendell on Facebook. <laughs> if he gets on there, he might accept you as a friend. <laughs> I just might. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, be well. <laughs>